And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Kate Raymond, intuitive and angel communicator who paints angels. Today we're going to learn about her. Kate, thank you so much for being on our podcast and welcome. Thank you. It's a real treat to talk with you. I've watched your show, so it's, you know, like lovely that you've invited invited me on. Thank you so much. How did you start communicating with angels in the first place? Well, it, it's actually interesting because I'm out of the corporate world, you know, and so this whole thing was a bit of a shock. But if I can take you back to when I was a little girl when whatever gifts I have started to show up, uh, I was three years old. My mother was pregnant and I would announce to the household and to visitors that little Anne was coming to live with us. And they would roll their eyes and I would sort of put my hands on my, my hips and they, will, they would say, how do you know? And I'd go, I know it. I know it. It's little Anne. And so finally, when my sister arrived, I was like, see, see, I know it. And so right through my life, I have known things. And when friends rang up and said, look, uh, I've got a problem. What should I do? Have you got any advice? I would answer, but not remember what I'd said. And I'd get a call from them six months or when uh, later saying, you know, that advice she gave me was really good. And, of course, I couldn't remember because I was channeling, but I didn't know it. And then I, uh, how did I connect up with the angels, first of all, consciously? Uh, I went to, I was living in Sydney, capital, one of our capital cities, and I used to like to go and walk by a harbour beach on a Sunday afternoon sometimes. And I was prompted to go one Sunday afternoon, so down I went. And I'm not the sort of person, Jeff, who will just call in on you unannounced. I'm on the phone and say, would it work for you? I'll be down your way. Can I call in? And so down by the beach lived a friend of mine who, Daryl is his name, he's a public prosecutor and a spiritual healer. And I, I thought, I'm just going to knock on Daryl's door. So I knocked on his door. He said, oh, how, how, how good, how delightful. Come on in and have a cup of tea. And as we were sitting there talking, he says, look, I've got a message for you. I've got an intuition for you. You should meet my friend Susan. And I said, why? And he said, I don't know. And I went, Daryl, is that all you've got? And he said, well, it's interesting because... Susan is visiting Sydney today and she's dropping by in about 20 minutes. Why don't you wait? You know, we'll have a cup of tea, wait, and I'll introduce you. And so I waited and this beautiful looking, about 35-year-old, lovely skin, a little son, four probably, arrived and we're talking and she said, Angel Cassandra would like to speak with you. And I, was, I looked at Daryl like, who is this nut? And terribly judgmental. But, you know, Jeff, I was very corporate. You know, you padded shoulders, you got buttons, maybe suits. Have I got a solution for you sort of thing? So I said, uh, okay. And I felt for some strange reason I thought I was a bad person. And I couldn't understand that an angel would want to speak to me. I just couldn't get that. Anyway, finally I said, well, I should be to myself, I said, look, stop being so cynical and just be respectful to this young woman. So I said to her, Susan, with respect, who's Cassandra? I only see Daryl, you, myself, and your little son here. Who's Cassandra? And she said, Cassandra is an angel that I channel. I'm a trans medium. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. And she said, I can leave my body and the angel can come in and use my body to talk with you. I went, okay. And she said, so she wants to tell you that 
And there were a few more steps, but I'm shortening the story a bit. She, she wants to tell you that the angels would like you to work with them, would like you to paint them. And I was like, what? Because i have been trained as a musician. You know, I'd actually gone to the University of Washington in Seattle for my first degree and then did an MBA and then went into business, right? So I liked art, but talk about paint, forget that. And uh, she said, yes, they would like you to paint them. And can you believe I said, what I think about that? And she said, well, they're a bit surprised, but that's their invitation. Now, what happened is called an angel arrangement by the angels. They arranged for Susan to be there, Daryl to be there, me to be there, and me to get that message. And what happened after that is I started getting hints come to me, not to my mind, but to my heart knowing. And the first painting turned out to be an angel, Aloysius, who is the pathfinder through difficult circumstances and the giver of insight, right? And what I was getting was these hints that he wanted a big wave in his picture, that he wanted two different horizons. I can show you the picture if you like. Yeah, and that so, would be great. Okay. And so I thought, what am I going to do? And... On the way to showing you the picture, let me tell you something else. I had been, um, my husband and I had been invited to a, um, a football club luncheon because he was head of a corporation that was one of the sponsors for footballers. And the person I sat next to was the chairman of a corporation. And he said, what are you doing these days? And I said, well, I thought, take a risk. I said, well, you know, it might surprise you to know that I've become associated with angels. And he went, oh, I've got an invitation on my desk to an angel exhibition, wife and friend of mine. It's for you. I'll send it over to you on Monday. So I went, oh, okay, maybe it's not so old to paint angels. And so I went to the exhibition. Now, this was extraordinary because I found her and she said, look, come today, come and have a cup of tea. The exhibition opens, opens tomorrow. Come by yourself so you can enjoy it. Okay. So I arrived and I walked into this extraordinary exhibition where she had painted in multiple, multiple, multiple layers of oils, not only the angel how it looked, but the frequency of the angel was being put into the painting like they did in ancient times. So the feeling in the room was remarkable. It had such grace and such welcome and such love. I just didn't want to leave. And finally, I, I bought two paintings of Archangel Gabriel and his, some of his angels. And then I went and sat in the car and I just sat there, held by the energy radiating from this exhibition. And then I drove home and thought, maybe it's not so odd to paint angels. And then I know I'm going on a bit about this and I will answer your question. <laughs> um, I got a call from this artist about a year later and I've been getting this thing about paint the angels, paint the angels. And she called me and she said, I'm coming over your side of the harbour. Can I, uh, can you, do you want to have lunch? So she said, I've got a message for you. And so I, on the way to lunch, I thought, who do we know in common? So I got to lunch. She said, get out your notepad. I went, got up the notepad. She said, I have a message for you from Archangel Michael. He said three things. Stop fretting about the painting. You have to do three things. One, get in tune with the pigments, find out which ones make beautiful colours and which ones make mud. Well, yep, I could do that. Number two, get in tune with us. Walk in nature, be in silence, pray, meditate. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Number three, bring those two together and paint us. 
Now, get on with it. So I walked home and thought, okay, I'll start painting. So I, I went to an art class. They've told me that I like things in threes. So the day after that, I got three calls. One was from someone who said, I've been to an angel painting exhibition. Another one said, I know someone who paints angels. And the third one said, I know a very good art store. This is its address. So I thought, okay, already, I'll go. So I went to the art store, signed up for an art course. And so the first angel, Angel Aloysius, the, who radiates the quality of pathfinding through difficult circumstances. Notice that there's a big wave and there's two horizons. And when we ask him to help us, he looks at the horizon we see and the horizon he sees for us and helps us make the adjustment, helps us get through whatever circumstances he's helping us to get through and gives us insight. So he was the first painting and it made sense because it was difficult circumstances. I didn't know how to paint or draw. Well, it shows that you have had some type of natural ability or something because that's very good, for, especially for your, not only for your first painting, but for any painting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can show you the second one if you like. Sure, of course. Yeah, I'd like to see them. What, what happens is they give me hints, right, and I just have a plastic pocket. I should have got one out, you know, an A4 plastic pocket, and I just put all the hints in, right? And um, the name that came was Astarte, A-S-T-A-R-T-E. Now, I didn't know what quality was. I didn't, I didn't um, know what she radiated, and I didn't know if I got the name right. And anyway, I said to the teacher, you know, this is a painting I want to do. And she said, okay, do you know the name of the angel? I said, yes, Astarte. So that night, about 9 o'clock at night, I got this very excited call. Bear in mind, I wasn't sure if I, got, I had the name right. And the teacher said, Kate, I just went down to the studio to my bookshelf and a, a book on goddesses had fallen off the bookshelf and was open at Goddess Astarte. Wow. Oh. And I thought, well, I got the name right. So now, when you decide to make these paintings of these angels, do you get like a vision within your imagination or consciousness, and that's how you determine how to paint them, or how does it work? They don't give me visions of the painting, of the finished painting. What they do is they give me all the hints, and when I feel like I've got enough hints, then I get out a tracing piece of big piece of tracing paper. And um, then I start to draw what, what the angel wants. Now, I, I come to understand that the angel being drawn and painted sort of stands up in the air near me and shines its light into my third eye, my heart and my hands. So the frequency goes into the paper and the painting. And I've learned to have the paper under the tracing paper now so that it goes into the paper. So when I paint on it, it'll have all the frequency that's already come through. Now, what I could see when I was sitting at the painting table was these sparkling lights, just like the air sparkling in a group. I knew it was a group of angels. And I thought that they came in and helped with the drawing right, or the painting. But no. What I uh, was told was there a group, get this, there are a group of 27 art directors and they decide with the angel, does the line I've drawn represent the quality that the angel radiates? And if it's not completely right in their way of wanting it, I have to erase all of it or part of it and then do another line. I do not get any of those directions to my mind. I just simply get it to my heart and I know what to do. I didn't know how I did it. It just sort of I put it together later. Can you take us through a painting or an example of a painting and can you give us an, an example of the hints that you get? 
Okay, like, let me just show you what a happens. And this is a starte. Now she is the angel who radiates happiness, the healing of grief, and the removal of sorrow. So if anyone's in grief or in sorrow, call on the angel who heals grief and removes sorrow. And if you wake up in the morning and you're not feeling very happy, call on the angel for happiness. How so about we, how about that one? Can you take us through an example of like, okay, these are the hints that I got about this painting. This Can I show you Angel Cassandra and then talk about the hints with her? All right. Sure. Angel Cassandra Okay, so she radiates. This is how it ended up. She radiates the quality of expressing our true self, our essence. So our natural charisma shines forth and warms us and those we meet. She also brings forward our gifts. Now, I only found all that out after I've done the painting. So what happened was I started getting hints. I, I was at the dentist. I was looking through a magazine waiting for my appointment and there was someone laying on their side like that. And I got this strong pull to take that picture home. So I went to the reception and said, please, I'm one of those people, can I rip this page out and take it home? She said, sure, I'll take the whole magazine. So I took out the picture of this position and put it in the hips. Then I went to a friend's place to visit and there were jacaranda, um, jacarandas, uh, I think it was jacarandas, the flowers hanging down. And um, I got, again, I got this, this, like this pull. It's a bit like when people are looking for a particular thing when they're shopping and they look through things and then finally they see something and they get this pull. This is it. It's a bit like that. So I got a pull to the jacarandas and um, so I, wisteria, I'm sorry, it's not jacarandas, to the wisteria. And I thought, okay, she wants wisteria here. So I found some pictures of wisteria and that's how the wisteria ended up hanging it above her, right? And then I was at a, um, at a spiritual something or other and i have been told by them that the angels wanted to be painted with a human body, a physical body, so humans would know that they're user-friendly and they wanted to have a halo to represent their divinity and a soul star, a star above their head to represent the body of knowledge they bring and their connection on high to God. And I was at this spiritual thing and there was... And I, I, would, I had been wondering about, I wonder what halo this angel wants, you know, what colours she wants in her halo. And this woman had done an art piece and she said to me, look at these beautiful colours together. Look at this purple and this cerise together. Don't they look good? And again, I got this pull to those colours and I thought, okay, they're the colours she wants in her halo. And also... Um, I got the feeling that she wanted a Grecian setting. Um, she drew me to a book with beautiful, rounded Grecian jars and bowls. And you'll see that the Grecian bowls are up here happening, you know. And so the other thing was that she, there were some birds that I saw in a book. And, again, I got this pull to the birds. I thought, oh, because she wants a couple of birds. And the other thing was I got out one, a white dress of mine and I looked at it and, again, I got that pull to the white dress and I thought, okay, she wants a white dress. And I got two other things that were in the hints. One was she wanted long hair, you know, and a clip in the hair and sandals on. So when I felt I had enough hints, to draw the picture then I was drawing, right? And I drew the sandals and I remember looking at them, at them and thinking, 
oh, they're beautiful. And I said aloud, oh, they're beautiful. And I heard in my heart knowing divine design. And that was Cassandra saying to me, okay, I like them. Yes, I've given you a divine design for your for the sandals. And then the other thing that happened, by the time I put the clip in, I wasn't sure about this clip, and, you know, people think us angels are high woo-woo and lofty. They are so practical and specific. It's remarkable. Anyway, so when I got to actually doing the painting and I had all the hints there to make sure I was doing the right colours and everything, I was unsure about this clip in the hair, right? And so I said aloud because I knew the angels there showing the light into the painting through me. Uh, I said, Cassandra, with respect, you're a divine being. You're going to look like a 12-year-old with that clip in your hair. No response. So I said it again. No response. It was clear she wanted the clip. And about eight months after the painting had been finished, by which time she'd given me what her quality is, etc., and what her name is. A girlfriend of mine who's very clear audience, she gets, in the Bible I think they call it the still quiet voice of the heart. And anyway, she gets a lot of her experiences with the divine through hearing in the subtle way, not through the ears. And so she walked in, she said, have you painted an angel called Cassandra? And I said, yeah, I just completed it about six months ago. She said, well, I have a message for you from Cassandra. She says that the clip is about keeping the hair out of the eyes so you have clear seeing and clarity. Okay. So that's sort of the journey of that painting. When you get these hints, are they spontaneously coming through you or do you have to force it and think about it? No, I don't force it and think about it. They don't work like that. Yeah, they they seem to work with the heart, not the mind, yeah. And so I can be anywhere and I may see something and then I'll get this heart, <coughs> excuse me, heart, um, heart pull to, like I was saying to you, and I think, oh, that's a hint. I don't know who this angel is, but it's a hint. And... I cut it out or take a photo of it and I put it in a plastic pocket. And then finally I'll get to draw it and paint it and go through the process. And sort of it in a way unfolds as it happens. What is interesting, Jeff, is that I the impact of divine light on the physical body for a long time is a shock to the physical body. So if I painted six or eight hours in the early days, I didn't know what to do with myself, whether to run around the block, have a cold shower, try to sleep, eat chocolate, what to do. Because the impact of the divine light was so immense. It's such a strange feeling. The body's going, oh, what do I do? And I remembered going on a jazz and gospel singing tour to the US once and with a group and what I noticed when the maybe the lead singer, <coughs> excuse me, maybe the lead singer was moved by the spirit to sing. And there was clearly such divinity coming through the singer that after this had happened and after the church service finished, I would find that person sitting somewhere quietly trying to integrate and accommodate the divine light. And I had to learn to do that. And so I thought, oh, okay, that's what's happening. And finally when Archangel Gabriel came to be painted, um, I'd been fretting about this because I thought, it's one thing painting an angel that's got one quality, but an archangel has many, many qualities. That's going to be a big bandwidth to hold. And um, he came to me and said in his tough and assertive way, although he's very loving, 
stop fretting, stop making cups of tea. You've got the bandwidth. You've learned how to do this. Gabriel is no different. Start. I thought, all right, I went to the studio. I had all his hints by then, you know. So it's been a journey of its own, this spiritual journey you first asked me about. Why do you think the angels want to be painted? This is a good question and an interesting question. Do you know this particular choir of angels I work with is called the Angelic Choir. And this choir has inspired paintings in Mesopotamia, they're way back in ancient times, then all those beautiful paintings in the Renaissance, and no doubt, and mine, the ones I'm doing, or ours, the ones I'm painting, we're painting, and no doubt others around the world. And the purpose of this choir through time, through the centuries, has been to help make it easier for, for people to communicate with God, the angels, and archangels. So they give these beautiful paintings or sculptures, so, and when they put their frequency in it, people are drawn to the visual, maybe, and drawn to the feeling of the quality. So I could put 10 paintings around for you and you'd look around and you'd go, I like the look of that one over there, but this is the one I'm to work with. And I think, how do they know? How do you know that? And what happens is our heart knowing knows the angel quality that we need to help us in our life. Do you think that our angels are already trying to communicate with us and we're just not recognizing it? And if so, can you give us some ways to understand how our angels are communicating with us? You know, it's been thought for many centuries that we have one guardian angel. People talk about their guardian angel. We actually have four, four guardian angels because it's very dense living in the third dimension. You know, bumpy things happen, stuff we don't want to have happen, and we can choose to respond or react and whether if we respond we learn to grow as a soul now our guardian angels three of the four rotate looking after us and so they're sort of like our spiritual skin to be truthful they know our thoughts our feelings our needs and as a spirit before we came as a soul and a spirit we we decided what we wanted to do with this life. And the guardian angels, based on their experience with us before or based on their interest in what we want to do in this life, they choose to come. So the three, three of them rotate, so we've got one with us all the time, and I have learned to say, guardian angel, can you please help me with this? Right? Guardian angel, will you please help me with that? And, and part of their primary role is to help us navigate through our day. And also, you know, we arrive, we go, come down the birth canal. By the time we get here, we forget what our plan was. You know, what was my mission? What did I have as my purpose? And they remember. And so they move us towards experiences that will help us remember why we came. And... So we can just simply say to our guardians, just don't expect to see them. They're very valiant angels. They just want to help us. They don't come with an agenda of their own. They come with our agenda. And they do three things. They help us through our day. The second thing they do is they organise angel arrangements. Say you're in town. You're not expecting to see one of your friends. You didn't know your friend was coming into town. and um, your friend's guardian angel says to your guardian angel, get your human to walk this way and I'll get my human to walk that way. And, you know, you meet up and go, hey, let's have a coffee. Didn't know you were here. So that's they have those angel arrangements. That's the second thing they do. They work with other people's guardians and our guardians for our benefit. And the third thing they do in their job is if we call on the angel of patience or the angel of strength or the angel of compassion, you know, those days when people go, give me patience, 
uh, what happens is our guardian angel will tune in to the frequency of the angel for patients, bring the frequency to our spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical bodies. And after a while, with that divine quality flowing through us, we become more patient. So that's how they work. And normally we don't see our guardian angels. We just have to trust that they're there, yeah? We've all got them. It's, their, it's our own choir of angels. Besides their jobs, as you were telling us, are there certain things in general that angels just want us to know? Okay, so the first major thing they want us to know is that we live in a free will zone. We came here to have free will so that we could grow as a soul. So they can't just come and help us without being asked. They operate under a universal law of non-intervention. They just can't come and help us, right? So we have to ask and then they'll come. So it would be wise to say every morning, angels, thank you for your assistance today. Today I particularly need the angel of compassion and the angel of wisdom and the guardians will get them. Or angels, please assist me today. These are the things I'm concerned about during my day. And then the guardian will work out, okay, I'll get this angel and that angel because they, they'll help, right? So that's the first major thing they want us to know. Please ask us so we can help you. The only time they can override this universal law is if our life is in danger and it's not our time. And there's the loveliest story about this little guy called Peter, an old man, who's in his putt-putt little car in between a big truck with a sort of platform out the back and a very big truck behind him coming up to a major intersection. And his guardian angel knew that this guy, Peter, was going to be, if he ran, that there was going to be an accident. And if this car ran into the back of the truck, he would be decapitated or killed. And so to intervene, the guardian angel sat on the hood of the car and became sparkly and looked like an angel, right? And he was like, that's an angel. And so he pulled off the road and pulled up to get a better look at her. And he got out of the car and when he got out to look, she went invisible again But it's a, and it saved his life. Right. So that's the only time they'll intervene. They want us to know this is an opportunity for us to develop, to develop qualities like kindness, happiness, joy, forgiveness, all those qualities. This is an opportunity because up there in that realm, we can say I am wise or I am humorous, but there's nothing up there to, to prove it or to push it against, when we're here, we get the opportunity to practice because this is, they say, it's quite a tough reality to exist in because there's so much stuff that happens that we can't control and that interrupts us. So they're the two main things that they want us to know. Ask us and do your best to learn the qualities you can. The third thing they like is if we do our best to live our life purpose. And the, the critical thing to know about living our life purpose is when we're doing something that makes us happy. If we're doing something that makes us really happy, that's pretty much the test for a life purpose. Now you can say, well, lots of things make me happy. However, normally there's something in terms of work that makes us truly joyful, and that's our life purpose. If that's not enough information, there is a, an angel called Angel Voy, V-O-Y, who radiates living life purpose, and that's his job, to help us live our life purpose. I'm just looking to see if I can find pictures to show you. He, um, he links our next step with the big picture of our life. So they're the three, three main things they want us to know. Call on us, live qualities that will improve your spirit and your soul and, um, you know, enjoy yourself. 
you know, enjoy the sun, the shine, the sex, the, you know, the environment and so on. I didn't realize that you needed to call on them every day. I could use their help every day, and I wish I could just say one blanket statement. Okay, guys. Okay, let come me every see. Day. See what they're going to give us. How's this? Thank you, angels and archangels, for being with me today in all the ways I need. And I'm grateful for your assistance. How's that? Great. Okay. Don't ask me to repeat it. It just came through. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. And then if there are particular things you think, oh, I really need a particular one today. Uh, you know, I, you know, the guardians are so wise because I had an experience the other day and the angel for self-belief and self-reliance turned up. I was talking to a friend who's a channel on the phone and she said, oh, your angel has turned up and she, she's saying she's your angel. And I thought, I'm painting 67 of them. Like, which one's my angel, you know? And I said, does she giving you a name? And she said she loves her hair. And there's this angel called Angel Egregi, E-G-R-E-G-I, who is the, uh, the angel of self-belief and self-reliance. And I was doing something that day where I really needed that quality, but I didn't know I needed it. And my guardian had just organised her. Right? And that's her. She loves that her hair is very long. Mm. Yeah. You know, there's a little bit of a glare, but it looks like you did some really nice texturing to her hair. Yes, it took ages and ages, and she just was so excited by her hair. So, you know, it's sort of like us in some ways. <laughs> How often do you paint an angel? So it varies because I've been writing as well and also doing angel consultations. So I've just written three books about them. I've just put um, the first book and a card set to an illustrated books publisher in the US. So fingers crossed there'll be a book coming out next year. So sometimes I'm painting, sometimes I'm writing in answer to your question, and sometimes I'm doing angel consultations, which I'm happy to talk about. Uh, in the first year that I painted them, I took a year off work and I painted 10 angels in a year. There was about a month each one. However, since then, because I've been working too, it takes longer. And each angel, like there's a beautiful angel, I don't know if I've got a picture here, um, called Lumiere. She's the angel for radiance. She lights up our next step so we know where to go. And um, that took 14 months because it had so many layers of very pale colour in it to get the degree of light she wanted in them, the degree of divine light, um, because it needed those layers to for the angel of radiance to radiate from the painting. And the longest painting I've done is Angel Netron, which took five years. Wow. He is the angel who gets rid of addictions. He's the angel who... Um, you know, we have addictions to over shopping, over sexing, over drinking, over whatever. And we also have addictions to limiting beliefs like I'm not worthy, uh, I'm not safe, etc. And Angel Netron describes himself as a gentle bulldozer. Those beliefs have under them, and those addictions have under them um, emotional baggage that needs to be got rid of. And he says he's a gentle bulldozer because he pushes that baggage away and dissolves it. And, of course, the addiction falls away. Personally, I used to be addicted to coffee. It's not hard. It's such a delightful thing to drink, and I love the smell of it. Yes. And when I started painting him for the first two weeks, I didn't feel like any coffee. I'm like, what? Because I loved had the ritual of my morning coffee and so on, you know. 
And after two weeks, I thought, you know, I saw I drank cups of tea instead. And now I don't do coffee at all, thanks to Angel Natural. So if anyone's got an addiction and you can't think of Natron, N-E-T-R-O-N, then simply um, say, could I please have the, to your guardian, just say, could I please have the angel who gets rid of addictions? Simple. And call on him every day till the addiction goes. So the, in answer to your question, how long does a painting take, it varies with the particular angel, yeah? Um, and I'm happy to talk about the angel consultations if you want me to. I would like to ask you this first. You paint the painting, yes. and then I'm assuming you probably make prints of the painting. Yes. And then with the painting itself, do you sell it or keep it? And if you do sell it, is it possible that someone who needs that painting is the person who ends up buying it? So this is interesting. They have said, they mean in the angels and archangels have said, they would like all the paintings kept together as a collection. So occasionally I will have exhibitions um, at a good gallery in Sydney or in Melbourne. I've had three big exhibitions of all these paintings. And people are, I find people standing in front of a painting like, oh, I'm in love with this angel, I need this angel, yeah, which is what you're talking about. And uh, because they can't have the painting, I feel like the angelic choir, the group I'm painting, have a plan for the, all the paintings, but I don't know what it is. Mm. So what I do is I have A5 prints with the job description of the angel on the back that people can buy. They're not expensive. And they get that in a, in a, a white envelope. And I post them all over the world. Have you ever seen an angel right in front of your eyes, like in real life? Yes. Can you tell us about that? Yes. I was in a suburb of Sydney. I'd got up early to go for a walk. And it was, um, you know, I just was walking. It, it's a suburb, pretty suburb. And the flowers were in full bloom. It was very lovely work walking early in the morning. And um, I got to, uh, just came around a corner and there was this beautiful tree with blooms on it, with blooms on the ground. And above the ground, about three or four feet above the ground, from being invisible, an angel became visible. So I got the shape, this tiny particles of divine light sparkling. And I knew I was in the presence of an angel and I, I was surprised and pleased and I sort of bowed by way of respect for her. And she, she was showing me she wanted to be painted, A, she wanted to introduce herself, which I was pleased about, and B, she was showing me she wanted to be painted and the knowing I got was the she wanted to be painted sitting in this tree uh, around water in a tropical scene. And so that's at one of the times I've actually seen an angel come from being invisible to being visible. She probably stayed there for about two or three minutes and then she went invisible again. And so, you know, I, occasionally I still walk there just from the memory of it because it was so beautiful and I felt so blessed. In researching you, I saw that you do angel consultations. Can you tell us about that? It's where someone brings their question for the angels, the questions for the angels, either on Zoom, on phone, or in person, and has a conversation with the angels through me. I don't use cards or any of that stuff. Because I've worked with them now for 25 years, I can bring through their words, and it's like, having a chat with the angels around what you want to know about. And so people want to know about all sorts of things, issues in their life, money, relationships, family, jobs, etc. And the angels, of course, are beings of truth and they tell you the truth. And 
uh, my gifts are around, I, I have clairvoyance and clairaudience, but I have very strong clairsentience, which is sensing, and claircognizance, which is knowing. So I get a lot of sensing and knowing. So I write down the questions that the person has, and then the angels choose what order they will answer the questions in because sometimes they bring it all together in the end in a particular way that's right for the person. And so it's like having a chat with the angels except I just bring through the angels part and I do a lot of channeling in those situations um, because, well, I, I didn't want it. Well, I didn't know if I was supposed to be doing it. And a friend of mine who has... Well, has Parkinson's, had Parkinson's for 20 years. I was at his place one day and his partner was there and I said, Trevor, you seem, you seem down, what's wrong? And he said, I don't know what's going to happen to me, Kate. I used to be a guitarist. I used to work for the ABC. I don't get a decent night's sleep. You know, I just don't know what my future will hold. And I was aware that what was coming, was coming through me, not from me. And the angel said to him, you're going to develop a way where you take photographs in nature, you're going to have a tripod with a very good camera and have a little cord and then even if you hand all this around, you can take the photo, you're going to develop watercolours on the computer, which is sort of a way of, changing the vision and making it into an artwork. You'll have three major exhibitions of your works. You will play with a band. We know you've been doing acoustic guitar and before Parkinson's, but you'll be drawn to right now for the acoustic guitar. And a band will come to practice with you and you will get an electric guitar. And he looked a bit surprised and I thought, and they said it'll take five years. And I thought, well, I'm in the hurry. I'm just going to wait and see if it happens. But, but I sort of realised that I was telling, you know, I hadn't expected that. And um, sure enough, he had three very successful exhibitions of his paintings or their whatever he called them. I forgot them now. And... There's a band here that uh, plays fusion jazz and he used to love going to see them. I would take he and Renee on Friday nights quite often and the band loved him and they said, hey, Trev, why don't we come on Wednesday nights and practice at your place? And so he said, oh, of course. So he bought an electric guitar because he wanted to learn electric guitar and he they would move his chair, you know those chairs that you can move them up and down and around. They would put his chair into a sort of V and they would lift him into the chair so his hips were right in the V. They would tie him in. Then they would put the electric guitar on top of him so he could play with them, right, which he just loved. And at the end of the five years when all the things that the angels had said came true, I thought, Okay, I'm in. If you want me to do angel consultations, I will. Do you think angels are humans that have evolved into some kind of angel status or are they completely different beings? They are completely different beings. We, are, we have a spark of the divine in us. They are all, all of their sparks, they're all divine. To, be, to grow from being a human with one spark to being an angel is not an easy thing to do. And it takes many, many lifetimes to do it. Most people don't do it. What we are is a spirit. And so the distinction between an angel and an archangel and a spirit is a spirit is someone who's, who's had a life and then sometimes chooses to be with someone. You, for example, uh, I'm being told have quite a large group of spirits who work with you because you work with so many people and therefore you need more spirits who will guide you. Yeah. So the distinction between spirits and um, angels and archangels is they're divine and spirits are not. 
All right, Kate, I need to switch gears with you. Obviously, you have a book out because you've been showing it to us. What is the title of your book and where can people find that? Okay, so that's just something I use when I'm doing angel consultations because oh. some particular angels show up to say they want to speak to the person, right, and I'll show them the picture and so on. The book, um, as I was, is, has just in the last month gone to an illustrated book's publisher in San Francisco, uh, as has a pack of cards, all things being okay, the book should be out next year. It will be called Angels for Today. And the cards, if they take on the cards, will be called angel blessing cards. And in, in terms of blessings, they gave a blessing for you and your listeners today, one of the angels, if, if you'd like to hear it. Yes, that would be great. Okay, so I'll have to read it. May you smile from the love of God's grace. May your tears be ones of joy. May you live your essence and flourish. May your gifts Touch the world and change it. May you face what needs to be faced. Step up and own your strength. May you welcome renewal and transform. May your heart express its calling and your purpose give you meaning. May you, you hear your soul's yearning, level up and shine your light. May sunshine give you warmth and sustain you. May fair winds greet your days and peace hug your nights. May life unfold you and uplift you. May success and accomplishment be yours. May positive abundance embrace you and true love and friendship surround you. May you know that you are loved and are loved. And may the angels and archangels bless you every day, every night, always. That's a great message. I'm not sure if I should be thanking you or the angels for that, but I thank you both. Welcome. <laughs> Your book's not going to be out for a while, and it sounds like you're making angel cards. Are those kind of like tarot cards, but like the angel versions? Um the ones that are hopefully coming out, they're like tarot cards and each angel has given a blessing like this around what their quality is. So this is a picture of the angel and a blessing to call on them really. You know, we can put the cards out when they've been printed and published. We can put the cards out and we can see which one appeals to us. That's the one our heart's drawn to. And then we can say the blessing on it to call that angel. Right. Or we can just look at the name of the angel and say, you know, I would like angel Florence or whoever to help me today. And the guardian will get her. After and in the book, if I could just interrupt for one moment, apologies. Uh, in the book, there's a story about each angel, a picture of the angel, a job description of the angel, and the message the angel has for us. And the blessing. After watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions about angels. Are you okay with that? And if so, should they find you on your website or Facebook or where? Okay, so uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram uh, and, fa and Facebook, if you prefer, on Instagram, it's at Kate Raymond, just simply K-A-Y-T-R-A-Y-M-O-N-D. On uh, Facebook, it's at Kate Raymond Official. And I have a website just simply called kateraymond.com, www.kateraymond.com. So I understand you're putting those details out. If you decide you want to have an angel consultation, you can just click on it, pay for it, send PayPal sends me a thing that says, you know, this person's paid by a credit card, and send me an email, which is on that site, to say, just paid. When can we book in? So that's how it works. It's really simple. Well, you've got the consultations. Uh, you have the book and the cards in play, and I'm assuming you're always painting. Do you have anything else going on that you want us to know about? The only thing I want to say is it, it gives me such pleasure and joy to really be of service in this way, to be able to 
paint and write and do the consultations. I had one woman, very senior woman in the fashion industry in Melbourne, I speak, phone and ask for an angel consultation. And she went through the website. And she said to me after, you know, I am amazed that the angels know so much about me and they could guide me about whether I leave this job or not, and et cetera, et cetera. She said, it's a, she said this is going to change my life because I know the beings are true. And she said, you know, Kate, this is such a blessing. And I, I feel really privileged to be part of the flow of the blessings, if that makes any sense. I feel really humbled and grateful to be able to be of assistance in this way. And, um, you know, I thank you for inviting me on your show and your audience for listening and watching. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. And I'm not letting you go yet. Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> no, I'm not. Because before you go, I want you to give us one more positive message. Okay. I'll just sit with this for a minute. It could even come from the angels. It doesn't have to necessarily come from you. Okay. No, no, no. We come to you in love, light, and truth this day. Is this acceptable? Yes. We would like to say this. Thank you for having this one on your show. Thank you for inviting us forward. We are Cassandra. And for Cassandra, We really encourage you to live your truth, live your essence, and enjoy life. One more thing you should know is that Cassandra brings forward your gifts, and many of you have gifts you have no idea about. And if you call on Cassandra, you'll get lots of help. I like humans. I do. And I'm not supposed to say I because we use we because it means us and God. But this one, Cassandra, likes humans. You know, you're gutsy. You get up every day and you face the world, even though it has bumps and things happen. That's admirable. That's admirable. So we leave you with our love, our light, and our truth. Thank you. Thank you for that message. And Kate, thank you for coming on the show and being with us today. I really appreciate it. And I wish you the best. Thank you so much. And to you, you're such a great interviewer. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.